Hello world and welcome back or welcome if you are new here. Today we are returning to my Rook and Raven campaign diary. This video is not sponsored or affiliated with Rook and Raven in any way. This is a Christmas gift that I received and if you have not seen the first part of this series, I guess is what you would call this series, sure. Um, go ahead and click the link in the description or up there and go watch that. I did a mini review of the notebook, went through the contents that come in the standard campaign diary when you purchase it, and talked a little bit about my plans for setting it up. I have since done some of the setup, a decent chunk of the setup, and I wanted to check in and show y'all what I had put together, what I still needed to do, where I was at with this campaign diary. So that... That's what we're gonna do. I sort of backed myself into a grammatical corner there. That's what we're doing today. I hope that you enjoy. The world is a crazy place right now and I have a lot of thoughts and a lot of feelings and I'm just gonna take 15, 20 minutes and not think about that and think about a fictional Dungeons and Dragons world and my notes on that. Good, good, let's go. Going in, I still have one of the acetate sheets um, up at the front. I, I haven't needed this one, so it just sort of lives up at the front in case I, I need it for something. Um, something I mentioned last time, I don't have my character sheet in this journal. I have my character sheet on D&D Beyond, and I don't really have a need to have it in a physical format, so I'm not using any of those pages that come in the journal. I've got little the adventure name and then the dates the adventure has started which was last April so like a year ago which is crazy to think about this is the adventure primer that the uh, DM for the game wrote I went ahead and uh, this was a Google document and I downloaded it and formatted it to be an A5 size and I actually created a little table of contents and, and made page numbers for it because it's pretty long. This has information you can see about the different areas in the world. This is all homebrew content. The different uh, cultures in the world, the different religions, all that stuff is all homebrew. So this is information about all of that. Um, good stuff. Then maps. This is the world map. This is the world map with cultural regions, so like the different nations. This is the map of the area that we're in. And this is a uh, map of a city in here. So this is, this is this place here. This is my little character backstory that I copied over. Cool. Here I have the uh, spell card slots and I, I mentioned in the first video I did get some spell cards also as a Christmas gift from a friend of mine. I don't have all of my spells here. I don't have nearly enough room for all of my spells. So what I've done is pulled out any spells that have a, a material component cost, not the ones where I can use something like a focus or a component pouch to cover the components needed for a spell, but the ones where there's an actual cost like uh, continual flame you need 50 gold worth of ruby dust for example and this is how I can easily keep track of what material components I may want to be purchasing because I was struggling a lot with like writing down the material component and then forgetting which spells it was associated with and forgetting like how much I needed of something especially if multiple spells needed the same things like holy water is needed for a bunch of stuff for a cleric so that's that's how i'm keeping track of that and it's working out pretty well so far and i've also got here a separate sheet for the shopping list um here i have the quarter pages that i have planned to use as an index for my notes i have not done any progress on the index as you can see i'm kind of i don't want to say that i'm not going to do it because I would still like to have an index, I think it would be really useful, but I'm not at a place where I know how I would order that, if that makes sense. The big thing that I wanted the index for was keeping track of NPCs so that I would know which session we met an NPC, interacted with them, 
had that as a reference and instead of doing it here, I started a Google document that I shared with the group. That's how I'm taking care of the most critical piece. So I'm not fully, I don't have a clear vision of how I want the index to work. So that's kind of on pause for the moment. And here, this is where I've started transcribing my notes out of my campaign bullet journal. Because there's so much involved in transcribing the notes and like cleaning them up and adding in more details and taking out the like random trail of thought that aren't necessary, this piece is taking a long time and I don't have hardly anything copied over. I've only got like a few, a few things. So I've got, I've got a lot of work to do on that part and it's taking, it's taking a while. And then because of the person that I am, I need a place where I can do like you saw, like you saw in here, the very messy, very quick notes and then rewrite those. That's the thing that I used to do at school, actually, is I would jot down my notes very quickly, very messily, and then I would rewrite them in a more organized, more thoughtful way. And I was able to really process the information and be able to reference back to it when I needed to. I know that that's a process that works well for me and it's something that I needed to be able to do in this notebook. So I cannibalized this poor minimalism art journal. I took out basically all of the blank pages that I had in this like massive chunk. This thing is falling apart now. It has served me well. Um, I ripped all of them out. I, I, I cut them in half so they're all separate sheets and I put them through a hole punch. I got one of the like happy planner hole punches off Amazon. I'll link it in the description. So now I've got these blank these blank dotted sheets that I can keep my notes on and that's how I've been taking notes um, during sessions is just doing the like quick messy stuff on these dotted sheets and then I also because I'm I'm this kind of person I also went on staples and I found these um, graph sheets that are a5 size I didn't know that they came with holes I really wish that they didn't I thought they were just straight A5 sheets with a grid, so that was a little disappointing, but they're still going to work just fine. Once I run out of the dot pages, I've got these to work with, and I can probably also use these for sketching maps and anything like that that I may want to do. And I've got a bunch more of these outside of the journal, too. And then, is that it? Then I've just got some, then I've got these blank pages that I'm going to continue to use for maps as there are new ones to include. And lastly, I made myself a little pocket. This is just a sheet of like fancy printer paper that has a parchment texture on it. It's not even a texture, it's just a, a picture. Um, the paper itself is smooth, but I just folded it in half. I taped the edge with washi tape to clean it up. I closed it at the bottom with washi tape and I used the hole punch on it just to make myself a little pouch because I have this little in-character note that my character got from one of her relatives. And then a Christmas present that the DM gave to all of us was these little re-roll um, certificates. And I needed a way to keep those with my character, so voila, pocket. And the other, acetate sheet for dry erasing is in the back here with my initiative tracker. So I've got our watch order, which is written in pencil on the sheet underneath so I can change that out. I've got our standard marching order. I've got uh, in game, we've got some of the characters are carrying packages on this like mission. And then when we're rolling an initiative, what I'll do is write down everyone's initiative with their characters and then copy that initiative order over here in the actual order so that I, because otherwise I just get completely lost and I'm not prepared for my turn. This is why I started tracking everyone's initiative was because I wasn't prepared for my own turns. So I just sort of took control and decided to do things in a way that worked for me. <laughs> um, yeah, and that's what I've been using this acetate sheet for. So I always keep a dry erase marker with me. And that's everything that I've got in my camera.
campaign journal. That's that's it. I imagine I will probably do another check-in on this journal at some point, but this is where I am with it currently. As you see, I've got a lot of work left in transcribing my notes, but other than that, it's going really well. I love this. I have so many things that I want to put in here and do with this to like further customize it. I highly, highly recommend Rook and Raven as a brand and this campaign diary as a product. Of course, all of the links for all of the things are in the description. You can go and check those out. You can visit the Rook and Raven website to see their products and their story. And that's all I have for you today. Thank you very much for indulging me in this tiny bit of escapism during a really scary and stressful time in the world. I hope you are all well, safe, as healthy as you can be. We need to take care of each other in this moment in time. So be good to one another. Thank you very much for watching and I will talk to you all later. Mm -hmm.